Thank you very much for coming here this evening. I would like to begin by thanking His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nayan, President of UAE. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President and Prime Minister of UAE and ruler of Dubai. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan, Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi and Deputy Supreme Commander of the UAE Armed Forces and the other rulers of this great nation. I would also like to thank my brothers and sisters from our great nation who have come here today and I want to thank you because when I drive through Dubai or I drive through UAE I see your energy your blood and sweat. You have helped build this nation. You have helped, helped build this nation. And every single time I come here, I want to tell you from the bottom of my heart, every single time I come here, I feel so proud of all of you. I feel so happy to see that you have played your part with dignity, with love, with togetherness, and with tolerance. Before coming to this meeting, I met His Highness. And I want to tell you a little bit about my impressions about His Highness, the leader of Dubai. Somebody who has spent more than 50 years, given his whole life, given a vision for Dubai. I met him today for the first time. And I want to tell you what I experienced. The number one emotion I experienced in His Highness was humility. <laughs> humility that what has been achieved in Dubai has been achieved with his vision. But the humility and absolute 100% lack of any arrogance in him. Great nations are built with that type of humility. A leader who listens, a leader who appreciates not only the people from this country, but the millions of people who come from other countries to help build this country. And this country has been built by many voices. It's a coincidence. Maybe it was meant to be, but this year, in the UAE is the year of tolerance. Year of tolerance. And I'm sad to say the values that bring together the people of the UAE and India, the central value is humility and tolerance. Tolerance for different ideas, different religions, different communities, 
different way of doing things. And I am sad to say that here it is the year of tolerance. And back home, it is four and a half years of intolerance. And this bridge that has been built between UAE and our great India, this is not a new bridge. You have come here. You have given your blood, your sweat, and you built this great city, but you're not the first. For hundreds of years, people from India have been coming to Dubai, to the UAE. And people from Dubai and the UAE have been coming to our home. And if we are successful, we are successful because of the value of tolerance, of listening, of working together, and most important, the value I saw today in His Highness called humility. So I want to start by telling you, all of you, that you have achieved great things here. And you are going to achieve even greater things. And I want to, you to know as an Indian leader, as somebody who has come from India to speak to you, I want you to know that you are India's biggest strength. Not only in Dubai, not only in the UAE, I'm not only speaking to you. I'm speaking to every single Indian, whether he's in Canada, in the United States, Europe, Africa, Middle East, I'm speaking to all of you. And I want to tell you that you have played a tremendous role in making India what it is today. And I want to go further. I want to go further because that is not enough. I want to say clearly that without your help, without the help of the NRIs, it would be impossible for India to be where it is today. Let us talk about some of the great NRIs. Let us talk about you. Who are you? What is your spirit? Let me tell you a little bit. In the last century, when we stood up and fought the British, the fight was led by a non-resident Indian called Mahatma Gandhi. When we carried out the white revolution, became number one in milk production, that job was done by a non-resident Indian returned person. Here on the stage we have Sam Petroda, Telecom revolution, non-resident Indian, and then liberalization, the brain behind liberalization, Manmohan Singh Ji, non-resident Indian. So I have come here to tell you that I don't just want to talk to you, I don't just want to come here, give you the same speech, and go home. I'm not interested. I'm interested in making you realize that you are India's future and we cannot build India without you. And I want you to do what you have done in Dubai, what you have done in the UAE, what you have done in the United States, what you have done in Europe, in Africa. I want you to help us do that back home. And I want a commitment from you. I want a commitment from, for you. You are going to stand together with us in India and help us solve 
the two or three big problems, challenges that we face. Do I have your acceptance to this proposal? I didn't hear you. I want you to say it louder. No, louder. Now let me tell you what are the problems that we face and what are the problems that we are going to work with you to resolve. And I'm happy to see that there are many ladies here because you are also part of that equation. The single biggest problem that we face in India today, over a billion people are facing a crisis of unemployment. You go to India, you talk to youngsters there and they will tell you that we have been devastated by demonetization and by GST and we simply do not have employment. So the first problem that India needs to take head on, we are in a cricket stadium, not on the back foot, but on the front foot is unemployment. And we need to show the rest of the world that not only can India beat unemployment, but India can challenge Challenge our neighbor, China, when it comes to manufacturing and when it comes to employment. And you have a central role in resolving this problem. You agree with that? You're ready to help? Okay. The second big problem. India has been brought where it is. India has been made successful on the back of our farmers. And if I was to ask some of you here what your parents or grandparents used to do in India, many of you will say they were farmers. Am I correct? And today, our farmers are in deep trouble. They are struggling and they cannot see the future. So we have to transform Indian agriculture. The same way we carried out a green revolution, we have to carry out a second green revolution, a new green revolution that will take Indian agricultural products, foods, vegetables, and put them on every single plate in the rest of the world, in Dubai, in London, Paris, Germany, America, Canada. For that, we have to give agriculture high technology, and we have to give them the knowledge that you currently have. You agree? So that is the second problem. Like Mr. Kurian did, I want people from this crowd who have understanding, who have knowledge to come back home and work with us. Sam Petroda, Sam Petroda is helping us, Mr. Chitambaram, Sam Petroda and a list of people is helping us create the manifesto for the 2019 election. The manifesto is going to contain our plan for the future of India. It is going to be an expression not just of the Congress party, not of one person, not of one individual, it is going to be an expression of the millions and billions of Indians. It is going to be an expression of our farmers, of our youngsters, of women like you. And most importantly, it is going to be an expression of our NRI community. I want your voice to be inside the manifesto the Congress party produces. I have told Sam Petroda, that he is going to have detailed conversations with our NRI community. In Dubai, in Abu Dhabi, in the UAE, in the Gulf, in America, Canada, rest of the world. And we are going to ask you what you need in that manifesto and what you tell us we are going to do for you. And I understand, I understand that you have a pro problem of representation. You have mentioned to me that you have a desire 
to be represented in India, Indian politics. You want to be represented in the Rajya Sabha. You want your expression to be heard in India. And I'm here to tell you that we are going to do that for you. We are going to make sure that your voice is heard in your country, that your voice is embedded deeply in our manifesto. This is what we are going to do. The last five years, not as a Congress person, but as an Indian, they have been sad years for me. And I want to tell you why they have been sad. Today, I was told by His Highness that it is the year of tolerance. What is tolerance? Tolerance is listening to people. Tolerance is embracing people. Tolerant, tolerance is embracing ideas that are different than yours. People of different religions, people of different communities, that is tolerance. I want to ask you, can you have tolerance without humility? Is tolerance possible without humility? Is tolerance possible with arrogance? Can you run a country like India believing that only one idea is correct and all other ideas are wrong? Never. It simply cannot be done. And what makes me sad is that today in India, my beloved country is being divided. It is being divided and I want every NRI to hear this properly. It is being divided for political reasons and for political benefit. That is why it is being divided. Different religions are being divided. Different communities are being divided. The rich and the poor are being divided. And India can never be strong if it is divided. I said to you, we are in a cricket stadium. I made the analogy of hitting a six. I want to ask you, can a cricket team that is divided, a cricket team where the bat batsmen don't talk to the bowlers, where the bowler doesn't talk to the wicketkeeper, where the wicketkeeper doesn't talk to the fielder, can that cricket team ever win a game? Then how can a country that is divided be successful? It is impossible. So the first task that we have to do, the absolute first task that we have to do, and every single Indian is responsible for this, whether he lives in India or he lives in Dubai, UAE, America, anywhere, every single Indian is responsible. We have to bring India together once again. We have to bring all our communities, all our religions, all our people, all our states together. And we have to say that enough. This is not many countries. This is not many religions. This is not many castes. This is first one country. From there we will start. And that is where we are fundamentally different. We simply do not believe that India can be successful if it is divided. And I want all of you to commit, regardless of which religion you're from, you are people here from Kerala, from Punjab, from Haryana, Karnataka, Maharashtra, every single state, there are people here. There are people here from every single religion, every single community. There are men, women. India can never be strong if it is divided. Please understand that. It is impossible for our great country to be strong if it is divided. There is a lot of work to be done. You have shown what is possible. In many ways, you have shown us how to deal with challenges like urbanization. You have shown us how to deal with problems like transport. You have shown it to us. We have learned from you. And there are these tremendous problems that we have to resolve. And it makes me sad that instead of discussing unemployment, how to defeat unemployment. Instead of discussing the difficulty our farmers go through, instead of discussing how we can build a future for youngsters, instead of discussing how we can empower women like you, we are sitting 
and fighting amongst each other. We are threatening each other, shouting at each other, abusing each other. It does not make sense in the 21st century. And that is what we have to do. We have to bring India together, regardless of the ideology, regardless of the thinking. Some people have said, we want a Congress Muk Bharat. We do not want a BJP Muk Bharat. We do not want that. But we want a Bharat that is united, where every single Indian person says, I am first an Indian, and then I'm everything else. And so I want to thank you. I want to give you all my love. And I want to tell you that till the day I die, my doors, my ears, and my heart will always be open for you. And you will always have space. And I know, I know that you struggle. You are sitting here happy. But each one of you, there is not a single person in this room who has not struggled and made himself successful. I don't think there is a single person in this room who has not struggled, who has not given his blood, his sweat, his tears. It is true, isn't it? There is not a single person who has not built himself from scratch over here. And that is something we are extremely proud of. And you must never forget that. That if there is an idea called India, if President Obama, President Trump can say that there is only two countries, there are only two countries that can challenge the United States, a superpower, the biggest superpower. The president of the biggest superpower says there are only two countries that can challenge us. Which two countries? China and India. And what is India if it is not you? India is not simply a geographical idea. India is not simply an idea that is bounded by India's geography. You come to Dubai, the idea of India is carried with you in your heart. You carry it in your heart, no one can take it out. No one can remove it from your heart. And that is what is common between all of us, every single one of us. So I want you to understand deeply that India's future is directly linked to your future. If you are, realize that if you are unhappy, if you are feeling trouble, India is unhappy. India is feeling trouble. If you are happy, if you are successful, India is happy, India is successful. Realize that you are part of a great idea an idea that includes tolerance, that includes brotherhood, that accepts multiple different religions, multiple different states. You are part of that great idea and you have a lot to show the rest of the world. In an environment of violence, of anger, and you see it everywhere, you see it in the United States, you see it in Europe, you see it in the Middle East. In an environment of anger, India has the answer. India has the blueprint to provide an answer, not just to India, but to the entire planet. Nonviolence is embedded inside our DNA. And it has been embedded not for 50 years. Mahatma Gandhi was a great exponent of nonviolence. But Mahatma Gandhi ji picked up the idea of nonviolence from our great religions, from our great teachers. Mahatma Gandhi picked up the idea of nonviolence from ancient Indian philosophy, from Islam, from Christianity, from Judaism, from every great religion, where it is clearly written that violence will not help anyone achieve anything.
So that is your history. That is your caliber. And I want to once again thank you with all my heart for giving me such a lovely reception, for showing me so much love and affection, for showing me so much love and affection in, in Dubai, so many, so many miles from home, you have made me feel as if I am sitting back at home in India. So thank you for that. And once again, I want you to know, and I don't care who you are, I want you to know that my doors are open to you. I don't care how old you are, how young you are, where you come from, man, woman, my doors are open for you. You just tell me how I can help you and I am at your service. Thank you. Thank you very much. We are facing, we are facing an electoral battle in 2019. I want to tell you, I want to tell you with utmost confidence that we are going to win that battle and we are going to bring India together again and move forward and take on the great challenges that our country faces. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Good night. One thing, my lady from Andhra Pradesh has just reminded me of Andhra Pradesh and I want to just tell my brothers and sisters, I want to tell my brothers and sisters who are here from Andhra Pradesh, I have made a clear commitment and the Congress party has made a clear commitment. The moment we win the election, special status to Andhra Pradesh will be done. Thank you very much.